If you have ever tried to use Google Analytics 4, you probably noticed a section called Analysis Hub. Here you can dig deeper into your data and perform ad hoc analysis. In this video, we will take a closer look at one part of the Analysis Hub, which is called Exploration Reports. Also, in this video, I will show you how to create three reports that were available by default in Universal Analytics. Landing page report, site search report, and one report that is related to e-commerce tracking. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing. As of the moment of recording this video, the built-in reports in Google Analytics 4 are quite limited. A lot of our favorite reports are missing. Hopefully, this will change in the future. But right now, if you want to dig deeper into your data, you will have to use exploration reports. This is quite an advanced feature for many Google Analytics 4 users, and there are many things to keep in mind. So make sure that you watch this video till the end. All right, so let's take a look. To get started, log into your Google Analytics 4 property and then go to Analysis, Analysis Hub. To start an exploration report, you can click on the blank right here or click on Exploration. And here you will see a sample report, but we are soon going to edit it. In exploration reports, there are three sections. The first column is Variables, then there is Tab Settings, and then there is an output, or in other words, the report that is generated based on your configurations from the first two columns. First, let's take a look at the variables column. Here you can change the name of your report, then you can change the date range, and if you want to use some segments, dimensions, or metrics in this report, they must be first added to this column. So for example, if I want to use dimensions in this report, right now I will be able to do that only with these six dimensions. In Google Analytics, a dimension basically means a parameter that describes something. For example, event name, city, also might be order ID, product name, and so on. Then we have metrics. So if you want to use some metrics in the report, you also have to include them in this section. You can include segments, dimensions, or metrics by clicking the plus icon next to that particular section. So for example, if I want to create a report based on the page URL or page title, then I would have to add that dimension by clicking this plus icon right here and then entering the name of the parameter in the search field or just looking for it. Soon I will show you several examples of how to create sample reports and we will definitely use these sections right here. Then in the second column, which is called tab settings, you can configure some additional settings of how your reports will look like. Here we have several techniques. So right now in this video, we will be focusing only on exploration, but you can also create cohort analysis, funnel analysis, path analysis, and so on. These fields and settings depend on what kind of technique is selected in this dropdown. So for example, if we selected funnel analysis, different settings would appear right here. Speaking of exploration, you can select different types of visualization. Usually I find myself using the table, but also if you want, you can use something like bar chart or donut chart or map or something else. If you want to compare several segments in the same table, you can add them right here. For example, I can compare mobile traffic with tablet traffic. And then we will see how many mobile users and how many tablet users are coming from these cities to our website. If you want to remove some items from here, you can just click this X icon right here. Then we have some additional fields right here. So if you want, for example, to change the dimension from city to something else, you can just drag it over right here. And then we will see the list of all most popular events that were tracked by this particular property. Or actually, in fact, in this case, the active users metric is maybe not the best one to see the event counts. Instead, what we could do is that we could scroll down to the values section and replace active users with event count. And then you will see a report that looks something like this, although it looks like the sorting doesn't work that well. Let's click on it right here. And now we can see the most popular events and we can see the counts right here. If it makes sense to you, you can add even more dimensions right here and then they will be displayed as rows. You know what? In fact, we can do a quick example. So here I can, let's say, select region. I can drop it over the event name and then I can select the device category like this. And then that second dimension will be added as an additional column right here. So right now we have one row for California and desktop. But let's be honest, in this case, this looks a bit confusing. 
I mean, it's not very convenient to see both dimensions in the same row. I mean, in some other cases, it might make sense. But in this case, we could move the device category to columns. And that way, we can see that California as a dimension has its own row. And then we can see desktop, mobile, tablet, and totals as device categories because each dimension is now available as a column right here. You know what? I don't want to make this video too boring with things like, hey, you could hypothetically do this or do that. Let's create three reports as examples, and then you will see how things are working. And after that, I will share some additional tips about certain features in this report. So let's start with the landing page report. In Universal Analytics, we had a report where we could see landing pages, or in other words, the pages on which the users start their sessions. Unfortunately, as of the moment of recording this video, Google Analytics 4 does not offer this report by default, but we could do some tweaks here and there, and we can actually try to recreate that report in this analysis hub. So to do that, let's first remove all the dimensions and metrics that we have here. And now you will see an empty screen right here. So speaking of landing pages, there is an automatically tracked event in Google Analytics 4, which is called session started. So in other words, landing page is a page where session started event occurs. That is why the first thing that we can do is that we can narrow down the list of events to just one event, which is session started. So in the tab settings column, we can scroll down and in the filters section right here, we can click it and then select event name. If you cannot see the event name here, you have to make sure that you have added event name as a dimension right here. And here we can enter that event name must exactly match the name called session start. Click apply. And now I need to include in this report the page URL or some other dimension, which will tell me which page was the starting point of the session. So I should take a look at the dimensions section in the variables column. And unfortunately, I cannot see anything related to page. So I should click the plus icon here. And then in the search, I should enter page and then start looking for some parameter. And here I see some custom dimensions, which is page URL, page title. So someone configured these parameters in the property. So I guess we can use that. Also, I see that there are some built-in dimensions, which is page path and page title. So in this case, let's select the page path and then click apply. Now we have to include this dimension in the tab settings column right here. So I should click it and drag it to rows because I want each row to be a separate page where that session start event occurred. But once I do that, I still do not see any data in the report. That is because the last piece is missing here, and that is at least one metric. In this case, things depend on your imagination and your goals. So as an example, I could include a metric, which is event count. So I can scroll down and drag this event count right here. And now you should see the report of all the pages and this is sorted by the event count. So event count in this case means how many times did we get the session start event? Also, you might be interested in the number of users, how many of them started their session on this or on other pages. So we can go to the metrics section in the variables column and drag the active users metric from here to here. And if you want to add some additional metrics, you can do that by first clicking the plus icon, selecting those metrics, and then dragging them right here. By the way, if you want to include some custom data in this report, for example, custom dimensions, you first have to make sure that that parameter is registered as a custom dimension in Google Analytics 4 property. And you can do that by going to all events and then including that custom parameter by clicking manage custom definitions right here. Unfortunately, I cannot do that because I am on the official Google Analytics 4 demo account. And here I have only read and analyze permissions, which do not allow me to add some additional custom definitions right here. Now let's take a look at another example, which is site search report in Google Analytics 4. By default, such report does not exist, at least yet. On my website, people can use the site search feature to look for a certain content. So this is definitely useful to know what my visitors are looking for. And in fact, this information is automatically tracked by enhanced measurement. However, it is not displayed in the default reports. So if we want to build a custom report in the analysis hub about site search, first, what we have to do is that we have to obviously enable the enhanced measurement in the data stream. So right now I have already done that. This is site search enabled. Then the automatic site search tracking is sending a parameter called search term. And if I go to the all events section and click manage custom definitions, 
here I have to create a new custom definition, which is search term written exactly like this. So I should go to create custom dimensions and enter search underscore term here. And after that, you should wait for up to 24 hours. And once this happens, then you can go to analysis, analysis hub, and then click exploration and start a new report. In this case, once again, I will delete all the pre-built and all the predefined information right here. Then in the filters, I will include that I am interested only in the events of which names exactly match view search results like this. Click apply. Then in the values, I will include event count or maybe I can actually even include users. And then as a dimension in the rows section, I will include a new dimension, which is called search term. This is the dimension that I have registered as a custom dimension in my Google Analytics 4 property. Click apply. So now after I click this plus icon and after I included this dimension in the report, it is available right here. So now I should drag it in the rows section here. And here I will see the list of most popular search terms. In fact, I see that sometimes search term is not captured by the functionality because, well, maybe people just do the search term by clicking search button, but they do not enter the actual keyword. So in this case, let's say that I don't want to see this in my report, so I can just do the right click and then select exclude selection like this. And this will automatically add another filter that excludes search term does not match not set. And the last thing that we can do as an example is let's say that we want to know some data about our coupon codes, which coupon codes are most used among our clients. So for that, we can just click the plus icon right here, click exploration, and that way we will start a new report right here. Then we will have to select a new dimension, which is coupon or in fact item coupon or order coupon. Well, let's say that in this case, we are interested in the order coupon. So click checkbox right here, click apply, then include that custom dimension right here. So drag it and include it in the rows. Then we could add some metrics. So in this case, active users, I'm not sure if it's valuable. I mean, if it makes sense to you, you can keep it. But in my case, I will remove it. And instead, I will take a look at transactions. So we see the number of transactions. Then what we could do is that maybe we could include revenue as well. So let's add new metric right here by clicking the plus icon and enter revenue and select total revenue right here. Click apply. Then you can add this total revenue right here. And if you want, you can also add some other metrics if they make sense. Also, let's get rid of this not set. So I can just do the right click, exclude selection. So in this quick example, we see order coupons and how many transactions were using these coupon codes and what was the order revenue of those transactions where these coupon codes were used. And for the end of this video, I wanted to also mention several quick tips that you might find useful. So for example, if you want to quickly add a certain dimension or certain metric, you don't have to drag it always from here to here. It is enough to just do a double click. And I've done that just now. And as you can see, active users metric was added right here. Now, another thing that you can also tweak is the cell type. If you don't like these bar charts embedded in every cell, you can switch to plain text or you can switch to heat map. And the cells with higher values are now displayed darker. If you did some mistakes and you want to go several steps back, you can do the undo right here or you can go forward by clicking redo. If you want to duplicate a tab in your analysis report, you can click here and do duplicate. This icon right here shows the sampling of your report. If you see a green icon right here, this means that this report is based on 100% of the available data. But if you see a yellow icon, this means that sampling has kicked in and this report is based only on partial data. Also, if you have enough permissions, you can export this report by clicking this icon right here, and then you can select the format that you are interested in. Also, you can share this report with others. So to sum up, exploration reports are definitely a really cool feature in Google Analytics 4. However, it takes some time to get used to it because when you start to work with it for the first time, and if you are a beginner in Google Analytics, some things might look overwhelming, but you should just keep trying and over time, you will get better at it. And that is how you use exploration reports in Google Analytics 4. Even though there are still some things missing, this is a pretty powerful feature. For example, I would really like if there was a community template gallery for reports where we could just import templates made by others. That way we could save a lot of time. Hopefully this will be made available in the future. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics 4, 
consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.